Okay, so today we're going to go over the code for PointNet, and we're going to start with the TNet module. So, if you remember from the PointNet overview, the TNet learns a transformation matrix, and in the PointNet architecture, it learns both a 3x3 transformation matrix and a 64x64 transformation matrix. And we're actually going to code up a single class that's capable of doing either one, since the architecture for the TNet stays the same. The only difference is that the dimensionality changes. So we're going to switch over to this slide right here and go over the TNet architecture. Now it's basically, it takes in your M by 3 or M by 64 point cloud, steps it through a series of shared MLPs, which are actually 1D convolutions, hits a gets hit with a max pool, some fully connected layers, uh, reshape, and the key to this right here is we actually initialize the learned matrix with an identity matrix. So the reason for this is the identity matrix, it's an orthogonal matrix, and when we multiply a vector by an identity matrix, we get the same vector back, or a matrix by the identity matrix, we get the same matrix back. We don't want to accidentally set or transform the matrix, quote unquote, to zero. So that's why we do the identity matrix. It's basically just for stability. So let's walk, walk through this TNet class real quick. So uh, one other thing to note is each of these are, um, they also have batch normalizations, and that's in the PointNet paper, which I will link in the bio. So we have our TNet class right here in PyTorch. And first off, we just, all we're using is PyTorch, nothing, nothing else. So we initialize it with a dimensionality and which in our case is for point net it's either going to be three or 64 and our number of points so this is the n amount of points we want to use so we initialize our 1d convolutions our linear layers and our batch normalization layers and our max pooling layer and the kernel size for our max pooling layer is going to be our number of points so in here we're going to basically pass in our point cloud through our 1D convolutions. We use ReLU activation for every layer. And in the middle of it, after the 1D convolutions, we hit it with our max pooling layer and we reshape it. So basically we have a 2D array with our batch size and everything else. So then this, this shape allows us to pass it through our regular MLP which once again, just a ReLU activation on a linear layer with batch normalization with everything except the final layer. So we've gone through these first, first few layers right here. We've max pooled it. And now we have this layer right here, which is the final fully connected layer. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So we initialize our identity matrix. We set requires grad to true so we can optimize this thing right here and that's going to be key when we add things together and we use this repeat right here to basically get it to align with our batch size which we get by taking x shape, the first value of x shape up here and right here this is a little trick to move it to the gpu if it's available we do x dot is cuda if we're working with gpu we move the identity to the gpu so we don't get any issues so we're basically going to hit this reshape, reshape and add step all in one line right here. So all we're doing, we're just shaping it to a 3x3 three three or 64x64. 64 64, and we have these shapes compatible so we could directly add them. And this returned X value is going to be the transformation matrix. So next, let's quickly go into what I call the backbone of point .NET. So everything from this input all the way to the global features is what I'm referring to as the backbone. Everything else right here, this is going to be the classification head. This is going to be the segmentation head. But coding this backbone is going to be key to implementing point net. So let's see how, how we can do this. So right here, we initialize the class. We initialize it with number of points, number of global features, and lo local features true. So what this local features equals true is, if it's true, it's going to give us the concatenation of the local and global features, and that'll be for the case of the segmentation head. 
If it's false, we're just going to get the global features, and that'll be for the case of the classification head. So we initialize what we input, and now we initialize both T-nets. We initialize the 3x3 T-net and the 64x64 T-net. So these T-nets, once again, are going to learn the transforms, and these are going to be the dimensionalities of the transforms that they're learning. So, so now we need to step, let's step through the architecture. So we have two shared multi-layer perception layers right here, a 64 and a 64. We account for that. We get those right here. And now we have our second multi-layer perceptron right here. We go 64, 128, 1024. We take care of that right here. And then this 1024, we actually take this from our number of global features. So if we want to do more or less global features, we have that option. And once again, our 1D convolutions all have kernel size of 1, just like our T-nets. And similar to our T-nets, we batch norm everything except the last layer. And then we set up our max pooling layer. And we want to base it off the number of points. And something we do that might be different in another tutorial that you've seen is we do return indexes equals true. So this gives us, we'll skip ahead and go down to where we actually do this right here. There's the max pool. So the max pool function, when we do return indexes equals true, it's right here. So we get our global features, but we also get the critical indexes. So these critical indexes, we can actually index into our overall features and we can get the actual locations of the points that we want to display for our critical sets. So once we output our critical index, we could take our original point cloud, you know, re, you know, re unnormalize it and everything and index into it with the critical indexes and we will get these sparse representations if point net is actually learned well. So let's go back to the right order of things. So so what we first do is we want to grab the batch size because we're going to need that later. Um, next, we want to take the input transformation. So we use that with the first T-net. And then what we do right here, we do batch multiplication. And we reshape the input. And we basically multi do that so we can perform this multiplication. Then we shape it back to what we get. We pass it through our first shared MLP. We get the feature transformation. We do the same thing as we did here. Get the second transformation. And then now we have the local features. And just to make things nice, I've actually cloned it and made it its own variable. So now we pass it through the second set of multi-layer perceptrons. These are, once again, these are shared multi-layer perceptrons. So they're 1D convolutions. And we use ReLU and batch normalization for these, just like we did in the TNETs. And then once we pass it, this um, output into our max pool, we get our global features and critical indexes. So we reshape these things right here just to get them in two dimensions with the batch size and everything else right here. And now finally, we could either get the local and global features concatenated or just the global features and critical indexes. So when we concatenate them, we have our local features. We take our global features and we want to repeat them n number of times so to make sure the dimensions work out. And that gives us this data block right here. And so while we're turning the critical indexes is totally optional. You actually don't need to have all the, any of this if you don't want to. We also, we do want to return the feature transformation and that's so we can perform this regularization and this regularization is going to encourage us to learn an orthogonal transformation, which is basically, in short, it's going to increase the stability of the optimization when we do the, when we get into the learning process. So that that's it for the backbone. And now that we have the backbone, that's really the hard part out of the way. Let's just I'll quickly step through the classification head. So all the classification head does is it takes this ten twenty four features and then 
puts them through a regular MLP, just linear layers, and it outputs the number of scores or the scores for each class. So when it when it shows the classification head, we want, we want the number of points, the number of global features, and this is really just for the backbone. If we want the critical indexes, you can easily just remove that if you want to simplify your code and the number of classes. So we initialize the backbone, initialize our linear layers, batch norm on the first two layers, nothing on the last one, and we also choose to use dropout. The paper did drop out. They used a probability of 0.3, so we do the same same as them. And you could also tune. Well, more than welcome to tune this and see if you can get better performance. So we pass it through the backbone. We get our global features, critical index, and our feature transformation matrix. And then we pass it through our multi-layer perceptron, apply dropout, and then finally pass it through the last linear layer. I plan to use cross in PyTorch's cross entropy loss, which takes logits as an input, so I don't have not applied a softmax here. And now for the segmentation head, a little bit more involved. Um, doesn't use regular MLPs. It once again uses shared MLPs, which are 1D convolution. So. So basically, everything's the same number of segmentation classes right here. Um, we get our backbone, initialize everything. Uh, we have a little bit, we take the number of global features and then we are able to add 64 to get the total number of features. And that's because the way we've written our code, we're always going to get 64 for a number of global features. If you want to change that, you could go back in and make this an initializer and probably initialize it in our backbone and get a custom amount of global local features that you want. So we initialize our 1D convolutions. We use batch norm for everything but the final one. Um, our backbone gives us our concatenated features, critical indexes, and a feature transformation matrix. Run it through the shared convolutions, reshape the output, and then we have our results right here. <laughs> So that's all That's all for this. I do have some test data. I'm not going to run it in here. Um, I have a link in the bio, so you'll be able to run it yourself and play with it and modify it as you wish. And that's all.